Welcome to part three of our series on building this custom engagement ring in SolidWorks. You'll notice a difference from where we left off on part two. All I've changed here is I created a simple cut where I split this in half two ways. We're going to do some mirroring operations in part four. But in this tutorial, let's get started adding some accent stones to this ring. First, let's start adding some materials to this ring. I like the way glass looks for a diamond, so we're just going to use clear gloss glass for the diamond. One of the, you select the body option. Then over here on the tree I can select my setting and select my shank bodies. And let's apply some metal. Uh, we, we want a white gold looking ring. I'm going to choose aluminum, polished aluminum. Tip for you guys, I wouldn't go to a jeweler asking for an aluminum ring for your significant other. It probably wouldn't be good. So we're going to create some small round accent stones on the shank here. So we can actually just take a copy of our center stone and scale it down. So let's create a copy of that. Insert features, move slash copy. I'm going to select my body. And I just want to ensure this copy selection is active. We're not going to translate or rotate anything. We're just creating a copy. It's going to give us a little warning letting us know we didn't translate or rotate. Hit OK. Now let's hide our center gemstone, the one that we applied the material to. Let's go ahead and scale our stone to insert features scale. I'm going to select the body we want to scale. And that center stone is a one carat diamond, which is about six millimeters in diameter. We want our accent stones to be 1.75 millimeters. So you can type in a formula in here, 1.75 divided by six, and it'll automatically calculate your scale factor. We're going to go ahead and scale around the centroid of the body and we'll do uniform scaling so in all three X, Y, and Z dimensions. Okay. Now let's move this accent stone into place. Because I'm using the Move Copy Bodies tool so much, I've created a shortcut up here on the top. And then rather than rotate the accent stone, I'm actually going to rotate all the other bodies. I'll explain why in a minute. We don't want to create a copy here. We're going to rotate around the origin 30 degrees. Now we want to drop this stone down so it sits inside the shank. And I can use the Move Bodies tool again using a sketch as a reference. Let's sketch on the right plane. And this is the reason why I rotated all other bodies and not the stone. If I wanted to create a sketch like this and I had rotated the stone, that means I would have had to create a construction plane at an angle. Working at an angle like that, it just makes things a lot less complicated by rotating all the other bodies. So I'm going to use the center line tool. And I want the top of my girdle here. To sit flush with the shank. Let's do coincident. Now let's use the move bodies tool again. We're going to translate this item using these two points I just sketched from the point at the top of the girdle down coincident with the top of the shank. Now we'll use the revolve boss feature to create a cutter to cut the seat for this stone. Sketch on our front plane. I'm going to hide my shank and my setting. Let's create the sketch with our center line for our revolve. Go ahead and create some quick dimensions here. shank. And let's create our revolved boss. Just select the center line of the sketch we just created. We don't want it to merge to anything just yet. Well, let's hide that. We'll bring it back later. Now let's wrap up part three of this series by creating the first prong for this stone. First I'm going to create a reference plane. 
We're doing sketching that goes straight through this point that I know is at the top of my girdle. And I want it to be parallel to my top plane. So I know that plane goes right through that point at the top of my girdle. Let's go ahead and sketch on that plane. I'm going to do a simple extruded boss for this prong. Set the center of that prong just a little bit away from the girdle. Let's do it at 35 degrees. We'll do a half a millimeter prong here. Let's extrude that just about half a millimeter into the shank, and we do not want to merge this just yet. Let's hide our plane, and let's use the dome tool to finish off the top of this prong. Let's go to Insert Features, Dome. We want to select the top face that we want to dome. We know the diameter of this prong is half a millimeter, so we want the radius of this dome to be a quarter millimeter. Alright, that wraps up part three of this series. We have our initial prong, and we have our cutter. In part four, we're going to take those prongs and cutters and do a series of mirrors and combines to finish off this ring.